Hey there guys, welcome back to part two of the best mine views money can buy. Uh, no, this is just gonna be part two of the fuel storage box project, my little redneck contraption to store fuel and flammables. Um, and anyway, I'm gonna show you some of the changes I made based on suggestions that you guys gave me. And uh, at the end of the video, I'll show, um, I bought a little temp gun. Uh, to kind of show some of the temperature differences um, on a hot day. I'm not going to do it right now because it's like 4.30, uh, but I'll do it like maybe 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the afternoon uh, to really show the differences in heat inside versus outside. And you can probably already see the first things we're going to talk about. Little vents and a, uh, I guess, a false roof uh, to provide a little airspace. So let's get to the changes and then I'll, I don't know, wrap it up at the end. So probably one of the most common questions you guys asked had to do with the metal roofing and whether it was going to get so hot with the sun beating down on it that it would heat everything up inside, kind of creating like an oven. So my solution to that was to create a false roof. You'll see it is raised up about three inches above the original roof and I just added a couple boards and laid some extra scrap roofing on top so that it creates a uh, almost like a thermal space inside where it shades the roof down below. Uh, it's getting towards the afternoon, so obviously it's not shading here, but this roofing on top um, covers about 75% the length of this, and I figure it will do pretty good to help keep the sun from beating down, and if you take your hand and place it underneath the shaded side, it's gotta be probably 30 degrees difference uh, from the surface of this temperature versus the shaded side underneath it. So that's pretty much it. It's uh, nothing real uh, scientific. It's just a little bit of common sense. The next most common question you guys had was related to ventilation. If the box would allow enough ventilation for any fumes that may come out of the gas cans uh, to basically be able to get outside and they wouldn't become trapped in there with all of the heat. Well, the simple solution to that was to switch out one of the 88 cinder blocks that are eight inches by 16 inches for a half uh, block. It's essentially just an eight by eight by eight. And then I got these vents from Home Depot. These come in an eight inch by 16 inch length. And I simply just bent them in half, uh, bent them on a 90. So the other side lays on top of this. And then this side just kind of hangs down. Uh, to keep rats or mice or anything from getting in. And I have one on the other side that allows a little bit of pass-through ventilation. Our predominant winds come from this direction, so I figure there's always a little bit of ventilation that's going to clear everything out, and if any heat does build up, it'll allow that heat to vent off. One other thing, um, these little corrugations, all of these are essentially little micro vents as well. And also related to the ventilation and heat buildup, a lot of you guys commented why I didn't have any insulation on the underside of the roof. So I have added insulation on the underside of the roof. I went uh, exploring through all my scrap materials and I found two pieces of R-Max insulation that I had used on my DIY travel trailer project. It's pretty cool stuff, very uh, high temperature resistant and it's a half inch thick, um, so it's not really gonna do a lot of insulating, but I figured it would just take the edge off. And I just used, I attached it with uh, some screws coming through the sheet metal, and then I just threaded uh, some pieces of plywood there over the screw, um, and it holds on pretty well. And I mean, I can hold my hand in here and you can tell a difference even this late in the day. And moving on from the insulation, a lot of you guys had commented on this little roof hold open or kickstand, whatever you want to call it, that I ought to have some sort of little notch in there. So I grabbed my saw and added a notch. That way it won't uh, wiggle out one way or another and give me a really bad day. Another comment that came up quite often in the comments had to do with filling the center blocks with earth. And as you've probably seen through the various clips, I have done this 
and it makes quite a bit of a difference. Uh, the reason I didn't do it in the first version was quite simply just the laziness. I didn't want to fill them with the dirt, um, but it makes quite a difference. And I think uh, when I do the temperatures at the end, um, I think you'll see uh, how much of a difference. Uh, even right now, I could put my hand on the inside of the block versus the outside, and it's uh, quite a contrast, especially on a sun bearing side. So anyway, that's a suggestion, another one that I put into action. You want to show that on here? Let's just show it on the camera. <laughs> okay, hold it right in front. Well, we're interrupting this filming with a little bit of a horny toad. And he's been viewing. flipping out of my hand. Yeah, here, show it. Let's do it where they can see it. That's pretty cool. We get these in Arizona quite often and they eat the ants and they're really neat little critters. And one last thing based on all of the comments regarding ventilation has to do with ventilation of the heavier gases like propane. Uh, this wasn't necessarily brought up in the comments that I remember reading, but it was something that I thought, you know, in case I ever did have propane out here or something like that, since propane is a heavier gas and it is gonna to tend to pool um, versus like gasoline and some of those uh, lower vapor pressure gases that are going to uh, vent off and readily mix with air and come out a vent like this. Um, I figured I would just <laughs> use the time to dig a little mini trench and I just got some scrap pieces of PVC that I had on hand and I'll show you a clip of it inside where it just, uh, it has an opening and it will go through the pipe, go through there and eventually go out there. Um, ideally it would be nice to be ru uh, to run it down the hill uh, to where I didn't have it go in an elbow down and up an elbow but I figured this was better than nothing and I just quite frankly didn't feel like trenching uh, probably about 20 or 30 feet until I got to an area where I could just have that pipe coming directly out and then I've just got a screened cap on that just to keep rodents uh, from getting in. Well, it's a bit of a breezy day, but it is about two o'clock and the outside temperature is about 92 degrees. And I'm gonna scan, scan the outside of the fuel storage box with this little infrared thermometer on the blocks, roofing, and then on the inside of the blocks, as well as the gas cans, so you can see kind of the difference in temperatures. So now I'm going to scan the temperature of this little false roof as well as the shaded area underneath. Uh, underneath here I think is a pretty accurate temperature but for some reason when it scans on this shiny metal it actually shows a lower number. I don't know if that's just an error with this little cheap thermometer or not but anyway I'll show you now. Uh, this is probably more accurate. This I don't know why. Maybe one of you guys can uh, tell me why. I have no idea why. So now I'm gonna scan the blocks on the inside of the box so you can see the temperature difference and then I'll scan some of the gas cans. Uh, so that's showing 70.6, 70.7, and we'll do some of the gas cans now. 72, 71, 70.4, and I will put lower in the screen what our low temperature last night was because you can see it's obviously uh, holding coolness in here. And then on this side of the wall, 
it's about the same 70 71.1 and then these cans that are closer to the roof of the box that is 77 and that is 79 that looks like it had an 82 uh, and a half at some point and I'll also take a quick look at the insulation that is showing about 82 81 degrees and we'll check this side that side is showing 81 degrees so it seems like it's a pretty good stratification of the uh, thermals uh, going from up to down and I might as well scan the ground and the ground is 68.4 uh, so I'm not quite sure what was happening with that shiny metal but I'll try to look for something else that's metal that's laying on the ground to give you an idea of what the metal temperature is and because I can't get this shiny roofing metal to register on this heat gun, I'll just scan some of these pieces of scrap metal I have. This is three inch by three inch quarter inch thick steel angle that you've seen me use on various projects. And that is a digger bar. It's probably almost an inch thick. So we'll just scan both of these and see what they are. Hundred twenty four. And this one's thicker, so it may not have completely heated up yet. 119, 18. All right, so that roofing metal probably might be thereabouts in that range. All right, guys. Well, I think that's pretty much going to do it for this video. As always, I hope you found it interesting, or at the very least, perhaps it gave you an idea on some sort of project of your own, um, or maybe it was just entertaining, as entertaining as a redneck fuel storage box can possibly be. I'm not sure. Um, but anyway, um, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, uh, hit the subscribe button if you want to see more similar content. And also remember, you can check me out on Rumble and Odyssey if you You'd prefer to watch my videos on in another location and uh, before I leave you I wanted to answer a message that I got from a friend of mine in Oklahoma um, <laughs> he asked me if there was a recent theme of some of my videos uh, in being more preparedness minded and I would just say this to you Ted um, pretty much all of my videos if you scratch a little bit beneath the surface uh, you'll find there's a common theme of self-reliance and uh, becoming more capable learning skills um, and just kind of creating that self-satisfaction and the life you want to live um, so that's always kind of in my videos um, but with the world uh, sometimes I refer to it as a clown world getting crazier um, there is a chance you could see more uh, quote preparedness minded videos um, because it is actually something that is near and dear to my heart to be prepared for all sorts of I things. I think it's very important for us to try to stay positive as we can and do everything we can to increase our self-reliance and our resiliency to this uh, ever so growing unstable world. Um, sometimes it feels very scary and if you're a person of faith like myself I would just recommend just keep saying your prayers and just remember that uh, ultimately the truth always wins out in the end and uh, I don't know I guess that's the most positive message I, I could leave you with. Um, I hope you guys did enjoy this and I will see you next time.